On page 8 of the service folder, we have a bit of catechism instruction for us this morning. From the small catechism explanation, a section on the angels. Which invisible beings created by God are especially important to us? The angel. No, angel means messenger. God frequently used angels to announce important events in the history of salvation. The birth of John the Baptist, the birth of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the ascension, and second coming of Jesus. What else does the Bible tell us about angels? First, that angels are spirit beings who were created holy. Second, some angels rebelled against God. They are the devils or demons. Third, the good angels are many and powerful. They serve God and help us. Fourth, the evil angels are also many and powerful. They hate God and seek to destroy everything that is good especially faith in Christ. Your hard work for this week, read it out loud. It's the third verse of chapter 18 of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus says, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. For this morning's sermon, I borrow from a sermon that was written quite a while ago. It is from the Reverend Henry Seek, who was pastor at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but he was pastor there in the late 1800s and early 1900s, so this sermon is possibly nearly 125 years old. And he began the sermon for St. Michael uh, with these words. The 29th of September is named St. Michael's Day in our church calendar, and it is an important day. On this day, we are to consider the benefits which God bestows on us through the service of his holy angels. Oh, how gracious and merciful is the Lord our God unto us poor mortals. Not only did he send his beloved Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our sakes, to redeem us lost and condemned creatures, to live for us and to die for us, to fulfill all the commandments of the divine law in our place, and to pay the penalty for our transgressions by his suffering and death. Not only does he give us his Holy Spirit to make us capable of receiving what Christ has accomplished for us, the fruits of his redemption, because by nature we are all adverse to these things, and because our Savior's blessed work would have been done in vain if by our own reason and strength we would have to believe in Jesus Christ our Lord or come to him. Not only does our good Lord have his Spirit change our sinful hearts, and fill them with true repentance, and kindle the flame of faith in our souls, and adorn us with the robe of Jesus' blood and righteousness, so that we might stand before his throne. No, he even sets the heavens in commotion for our sakes. The entire heavenly host, the myriads of holy angels, those blessed inhabitants of the invisible world, who are always standing before his throne and awaiting his commands, he appoints to minister to us, uh, to us who stand far below these pure and perfect creatures of the divine maker. He orders them to shield and protect us sinful beings while we are walking the pathway of this life and to assist us that we might reach the goal of our pilgrimage, the home in heaven which God hath prepared for them that love him as we journey into the kingdom of heaven. That is the heaven prepared for us by Jesus himself. God sends his holy angels to protect us, especially spiritually. These holy angels are to protect us from things that would cause us to lose our faith, which is, of course, exactly what Satan and his demons, the fallen angels, want from us. They want us to give up our faith in Jesus Christ. And so God sends his holy angels to protect us from those things. Now we've all heard stories of guardian angels. I have two. My first story of a guardian angel is from when I was 10 years old. We were living in the apartments over in Ingleside, down the road from Dog and Sons over in Ingleside. Some of you know where that is. And we were building the house in Fox Lake Hills, and while we were, that, we were there for a year while that house was being built. And it was a hot summer. I was a 10-year-old boy outside playing. I climbed the tree in front of our apartment complex, and I climbed so high 
that I was able to sit on one of the big branches right outside my window on the third floor of the apartment complex. And I leaned back against a branch that I didn't know was dead. And it snapped and fell to the ground. I should have fallen to the ground, but I didn't. I caught my balance and I was safe up on that branch. And I climbed back down and I never climbed a tree ever again, knowing that it must have been an angel that kept me from falling and breaking my neck. That's my first story of a guardian angel. The second one comes a lot later. We're living in California, and we were coming in from the east. We were spending some time out in the desert area of California, and we were coming back into the San Gabriel Valley, and you come down the 10 freeway, down a hill and around a corner, and of course, traffic in, in LA was running so smoothly, everyone's driving the speed limit and they're all being safe like they certainly do in California. You're either not moving or you're moving at speed of light in California. And we were moving at the speed of light. And in front of us, I'm just trying to stay in my lane and keep my family safe in the minivan. In front of us is a bus and a semi-trailer. And they were going a good 90 miles an hour right next to each other. And they were back and forth like this in the wind coming down into the valley. And it actually, they were rubbing all the way up. And they actually, at the tops of the the bus and the truck hit each other as we were going around the curb. And it must have been many angels protecting us on that freeway that day because no accident occurred. These angels are out there and they are protecting us. They are protecting us from that which would hurt us, especially would hurt us spiritually. The things that would hurt us and cause us to lose our faith in God. That is what the angels do for us. Now, in the Bible, angels are mentioned several times. You have a reading uh, in today's two readings of Revelation and Daniel where angels are mentioned. Jesus mentions angels. And there are three types of angels that are mentioned in the Bible. They're a fascinating subject. We don't have time to go into all the details of angels. But there are three kinds that you should know about. There are the seraphim, which is plural for seraphs. These are the angels that are... Uh, mentioned in Isaiah chapter 6, they have six wings, and they are involved with some kind of fire because seraph is the Hebrew word for fire as well, or to burn, and so in Isaiah 6, they are bringing uh, the hot coals of the altar in heaven uh, to Isaiah's lips in chapter 6, so we have those angels, seraphim. We have cherubim, which is plural for cherubs. Now, in our minds, we have an idea of what a cherub looks like, unfortunately, from the Renaissance. It's a little baby with wings, and that's not what a cherub is at all. That's a misunderstanding. Actually, uh, the, whatever painter first started painting those was actually thinking of more of the Greek mythology of, some ch of, of like Cupid and things like that, those kind of things. But cherubs actually are strong angels. We are first introduced to cherubs in Genesis chapter 3, where cherubim, several cherubs, guard the entrance to the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life to keep Adam and Eve from going back and eating of the Tree of Life so that they would live forever in their fallen, sinful state. And we also have pictures of cherubs that are uh, instructed, the Israelites are instructed to build, as on the top of the uh, Ark of the Covenant and in the tapestries of the tabernacle and later the temple. And then there are archangels. In archangels, there is at least one that is named in the Bible, and that's Michael, in Daniel and Revelation. And then there's only one other name, named angel, although he's not named as an archangel, and that's Gabriel, the one who brings the message of Jesus' birth and John the Baptist to, uh, the, in Luke 2 and in Matthew. So we have these idea of angels from the scriptures that are very powerful beings. They are our guardians. They protect us. They do the bidding of God. But what does this have to do with children? Again, Pastor Seek preached over 100 years ago. Scarcely has a child been born into the world when angels are there, gazing at the newborn babe with delight, because God entrusts that helpless little one to their special care and attention. And it is so sweet a service for them to minister to little children. Jesus spoke of infants when he said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 18, 10. Children then have angels. They're angels. Because these angels watch over them, guard them, and protect them. Not only children, but those angels stay with us all our lives. We are protected by God's holy angels. And because we are protected 
by God's holy angels. We can live in this life with confidence to do so much, knowing that we have protection around us. We can trust God to provide for us, as he promises to do. I will give you all that you need to support this body and life, daily bread. We don't have to work ourselves to a frenzy, working 60, 70, 80 hours a week trying to provide for ourselves and our families, because God has already promised to provide for us. The angels are protecting us spiritually. We don't have to worry about anything in this life. Just trust that God will provide. So we can also learn more about God in Bible study, Sunday school, and in worship. And we can share what we know and learn about God with other people as we connect with each other as well as engage our communities, our culture with the gospel of Jesus Christ. These are the things that we can do with confidence because God's holy angels are protecting us every step of the way. This is how we enter into the kingdom of heaven. As we have talked about in, in the past and as well as in the scripture readings for today, entering into the kingdom of heaven with God's holy protection behind us and God leading the way through his word and sacrament in front of us. But a final word from Pastor C to wrap this up. If there is anything from which we may derive sweet comfort in this life, it is this doctrine of the presence of God's holy angels with us. We are so weak and powerless. The world about us is so full of temptations. Satan is ever ready to seduce us into misbelief, despair, and other great shame and vice. What comfort for us to know that we are not left to ourselves upon this troubled sea. What comfort for us to know that we are not solitary wanderers when we must cross the barren deserts and pass through the dismal regions of our earthly pilgrimage. Invisible allies are with us, God's angels. There is nothing in this world that can withstand them. A single one of them is more powerful than an army of warriors, and all the devils must speed away when an angel appears to succor the children of God. What comfort for us to know that angels will not leave us, will not depart from us, but remain and hold onto us until they have accomplished their design and reached the end of their ministration, until they have borne our immortal souls into the realms of glory. This, then, shall be our prayer. Lord Jesus, who dost love me, O oh, spread thy wings above me and shield me from alarm. Though Satan would devour me, let angel guards sing o'er me. This child of God shall meet no harm.